Hi guys, EBP Man here, and today we're going to take a look at the ALPD Portable Laser Projector. Let's check it out. Now on the channel we've recently been um, really reviewing some portable projectors and projectors that I would consider fall into the smart category. Smart because they're not just only capable of projecting an image on the screen but we're looking for a projector that also has some cool tech included with it. One of my favorite type of projectors are those that include operating systems on them that not only have the ability to present content coming from an iPad, an iPhone, an Android phone or an Android tablet or a PC or even a DVD player player or any uh, media source, but also one that can be self-contained. In other words, a projector that can consume content coming from YouTube or any other internet source on its own, being Wi-Fi enabled, and project that content on a screen. And this projector falls in that category. So let's check out some of the specs. We'll do an unboxing and we'll see how it works. Now inside the box you're going to find your power cord and power brick for the projector. You do have a rechargeable remote which requires no batteries because everything is built in so all you have to do is charge that. It does come charged uh, f um, right out of the box. You have a SAT card, a user guide, and a micro USB charging cable for the remote and the projector itself. Now taking a closer look at the projector, let's start from, from the back here. Uh, first of all, we'll see all the connecti connectivity that's available. Uh, this is where you're going to put your power source. You do have two USB uh, sticks, which it's going to be able to run media from. So you can have you know, your video files, PowerPoints, anything that you're going to be sharing in a meeting or in a personal setting, you can have it and it will be able to read it from there. It does have HDMI, you do have headphone source, and then you have a micro SD slot as well, which is really going to give you a lot of flexibility when it comes to any kind of media consumption or anything that you have to display. You have cooling on each side. So you can see this uh, right here. On the bottom here, you do have these rubberized feet that are going to, again, make sure that your projector stays in place. Um, in the front here, you have additional venting that's taking place. And then here you have a dual purpose port, or, or I would say cover. Uh, this protects your camera. Uh, lens right here, or not the camera lens, but the actual lens of the projector, and it also serves as a stand. So what you can do is use this um, to pitch the projector in an angle. Remember, it's going to auto keystone, so that is if the image is needs to be adjusted so that it looks flat, regardless of the angle, it's going to take care of that uh, for you automatically. So um, you also then have all of the laser type technology that's doing the focus and the adjustment automatically. So that's pretty much all there's to it. It's made out of a metal material. It does not feel feel in any way plasticky, it's substantial, um, it feels very well constructed, and once again, uh, as you'll see in a couple seconds, has fantastic image quality. So let's power it up and we'll see what we can see. Now doing the starter process, a couple things are going to happen. Uh, first of all, you're going to see an autofocus function taking place where it is determining uh, what's the best focal uh, point for the um, for the actual projection. So it's looking at the wall, it's looking at the image, and then it's going to adjust it, and it's going to give you that nice focus as you can see here. Once it's booted up, it's going to ask you, do you want to be in office mode or home mode? And each one is going to illustrate um, kind of a different UI. I'm going to choose home mode for now. Now once you go into home mode, um, you can see uh, what you have available to you, which is more of a media type consumption type function. Now keep in mind that with this projector, you can share screens, and you'll notice that I'm going to use the mouse, or I'm using the, uh, the remote here. I'm just going to go down to the multi-screen. This does support AirPlay, so if you're using an iPad or an iPhone, you'll be able to share the screen from those devices. If you're using an Android phone, pretty much any digital device that has the casting capability, you'll be able to cast. Now as we look at the image, a couple things I just wanted to highlight. Uh, this is the home mode as you saw based on the selection. And it's going to give you what would be considered the common features or function that you would use in a home setting. Uh, while this again is a smart device that's going to be able to produce its own content, um, you can also um, cast content coming from an iPhone or an iPad. Um, and you can see that over here in this area. You're going to be able to do that same from an Android device or any device that has the ability to share a screen. And you would do that all wirelessly. Once you choose that um, capability, it's immediately going to highlight um, the device uh, that it's uh, 
that it is, uh, the IP address, and then it's going to give you the ability to walk through the process connecting. And it kind of shows you what that process is, and even if you want to be able to use an app that's available, you could download that. So all those features come um, directly um, in the projector. Now, I said that this uh, projector is running Android, and it is. And you have a couple options. Uh, one thing I did notice is that it does not have the standard uh, Google Store. It does have its own uh, store. Um, and you can see it, it's proprietary and labeled as the uh, projector itself uh, brand. But one of the things, it has all the standard um, apps that you would find on there. Now, if you're not comfortable downloading from this marketplace, what you could do is you can sideload um, any of the apps that uh, you'd like to use on the projector. So, for example, I'm comfortable with YouTube, but maybe you know, you're looking for WebEx or GoToMeetings, one of those other apps. If it's not available on the marketplace, you can always sideload that. And basically, that means taking a USB stick, plugging it in with the APK, and then just loading it that way. But it, again, it has this uh, a very robust uh, marketplace that's available with a lot of the Google apps. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that. Uh, you also then have the ability to, um, let's go into settings for a second so we can look at that because uh, I want to show you some of the different modes. So in the settings area, you can see what network you're connected to, uh, the projector brightness, and we'll look at some of the controls that are here. So you can have autofocus on startup, that means on boot, it's going to adjust the image and the clarity of the image as it's starting up. You can have autofocus on, which means that it's always going to try to make sure that it has the best uh, focus during that time. And you can see how it's doing that adjustment right now for clarity. And uh, it will just adjust based on the wall and the situation that you're in. And you notice how it automatically focused. Uh, you have manual focus, which is what you're traditionally used to with a lot of the older projectors. And then um, you have the keystone, which is automatic. You can have manual as well. Um, you can have a brightness selection. You can do screen scaling. You can determine what kind of projection mode um, you're going to have. So this will support reverse projection. It will you know, flip it. Uh, rotate it so uh, pretty much all the flexibility that you'd expect depending on how this projector uh, is mounted if it's mounted on a ceiling setting uh, you do have um, you know the ability to uh, a boot from the signal source and we'll go ahead and exit out of this uh, from a settings perspective you have system information it does have over-the-air upgrades you can switch launchers so I'm going to choose office so you can see what that looks like and I'm going to come out and now this is the office mode, so you notice it's very different. It's not so much media oriented, but it's more office oriented. Uh, you have the file explorer, the apps that you can see there, and you can obviously add different shortcuts here. If I go into the office settings, again, this is going to give you the ability to look at PowerPoints, PDFs, Word, documents, anything that's stored on board memory on the micro SD or on the, uh, the stick, the USB stick. I'm going to go back into settings now and I'm going to go back into general and I'm going to switch it to home. You can change the wallpaper, you can change the language, you can change the input method, you could go back into factory settings, set the date and time, you know, um, do auto run on their app settings, that means that when you download the apps they automatically get installed and there's no pause. So they really simplified the UI here or all the settings that you have in Android because Android is underneath this um, and you um, definitely don't have to go through all the settings to get that going. So let's exit out of this and I went back to my to the mode where it's more of a home use uh, solution. So under the notes section you're gonna get like alerts and notifications. Uh, this is kind of like a um, a uh, an Asian market for content uh, so you get a lot of live streaming TV and media uh, depending on what part of the world you're, your world you're in you may or may not care for this um, again this is going to stream any kind of media that you have if you have anything and then um, this is the sharing that we looked at so I just want to go into all apps for a second and under all apps um, let's talk about some of the things that you can install so one of the things I did is I uh, went ahead and installed YouTube on here and I also installed Kodi. Uh, Kodi is a multimedia uh, application very popular that allows you to really stream content from your home or any part of the world and I'm going to show you that in a second uh, and then you have also YouTube so if I click on YouTube you can see the kind of performance that you're getting this is connected to the Wi-Fi in my home and I'm just gonna just run just a couple seconds of this so you can see this uh, so this is gonna give you a sense of kind of the image quality that's coming out keep in mind I do have the light in my room is uh, is on so the office light is on uh, but you can see 
you know, this is a dark setting because this is the voice, but it will basically start lighting up. And now you can see uh, the overall quality is coming. So I'm going to pause this for a second and then turn off the light so you can see how well it looks. So now I've switched, um, I've turned off the light and I'm going to go back into the into the play mode. I'm going to get a, a second. And now you can see the overall quality again of the image. I'm going to make sure that we're in good focus so you can see the color quality because it was being a little bit washed out with my camera. But here you can see the overall image quality. Very, very, very good quality that I think that everybody would be happy with. Now the other application that I love on these smart projectors is installing Kodi. Now Kodi is available on the marketplace that we saw and you could also sideload it. Um, I went ahead and sideloaded it because I like configuring my own and we're going to click on it and just to give you a sense of how quickly things load. Um, you saw Kodi just, they crushed it very fast and I have an internet connection and you can see that the streaming on the very bottom has already started. If I were to go into let's say Exodus which is I think uh, one of the favorite add-ons that you have with Kodi, you can choose that and then immediately uh, choose if you're looking for TV shows and this is going to allow you to stream content um, from you know a lot of media sources all over the world. Um, what you'll see immediately is once I choose the most popular shows it is now highlighting it with all the content that's available that you can just choose and start watching. So again giving you a lot of flexibility when it comes to uh, overall media consumption uh, let me just adjust the brightness right there to see if you can get you the best uh, image to the kind of content or image quality that you're going to see. Um, so again, Kodi gives you just all this flexibility to be able to see just an enormous amount of content and stream it in, in real time. So a lot of flexibility given that this is running um, Android and it gives you the ability to run an application like Kodi. Now connecting the projector and a phone is really simple. So here I have um, my phone and you'll notice that there is an app right here. Let me try to get this in focus for you. It's called XM Fly. XM Fly. We'll try to focus on that. So XM Fly. So you'll go to the Android Marketplace or you go to the Apple Marketplace and you'll install this app. Now once you install this app, it's pretty straightforward. All you do is, is launch the app and if you're on the same network as the projector is, it will automatically connect. So now what you see on the screen is a PowerPoint that's on my phone being projected wirelessly over to the projector. So what you see right here is the phone and you'll watch, I'll keep both of them on camera. I'll swipe the screen and uh, as soon as the uh, it changes on the phone, it changes on the projector as well. And again, the cool thing that's going on here is you have a wireless PowerPoint projection uh, being communicated from my phone tablet, phone, or laptop going through my network and then appearing on this projector and on the screen. So very flexible for business applications. So this concludes my review of the ALPD portable laser projector. If you have any comments or questions, leave it in the bottom area right here. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.